KMP, Kinder Morgan Energy Partners, is going to acquire the uh, stock of Copano in a transaction that, including assumed debt, uh, is about $5 billion. Uh, this is a definitive agreement, uh, and it is a unit-for-unit exchange, uh, KMP units uh, at uh, .4583 uh, per Copano unit. Uh, it's subject to the customary closing conditions, including a vote of Copano unit holders. Uh, does not require a vote of KMP unit holders, and we expect to close it in the third quarter of 2013. Now, let me just say a little bit about why we're doing this deal. Uh, it's a great strategic fit for us. Uh, Copano's main area of interest and uh, development over the years, of course, has been in the uh, gathering and processing uh, area. Uh, that's an area where we have not had a large presence. We've had a significant joint venture with Copano in the Eagleford, uh, which has been very successful and continues to grow. Uh, and so we think strategically this gives us another whole arrow in the quiver uh, at Kinder Morgan. Uh, beyond that, uh, when you can do a deal that uh, from the very start is accretive, both the KMP and KMI, we think that makes a lot of sense. So when you can combine good strategy uh, with good financial results, uh, we think it's a win-win situation. As far as accretion is concerned, uh, uh, it will be accretive to KMP. We don't know exactly when in 2013 it will, uh, it will close. It will be modestly accretive even 13, but looking at 14, uh, we expect to have about 10 cents of accretion per unit at KMP. Uh, as part of this transaction, uh, as we said in the release, KMI, the general partner, uh, has agreed to forgo $120 million uh, in each of 2014 and 2015, uh, and then uh, decreasing uh, to $110 million in uh, 2016, and then decreasing by $5 million a year thereafter. After. Uh, even after that, uh, not only is it accretive to KMP in terms of $0.10 cents per unit, but it's accretive to KMI on an after-tax cash available for dividends basis uh, by about $25 million next year in 2014 and by about $70 million in 2016. So, you know, we have around a billion shares outstanding at KMI, so we're looking at accretion going up from 2.5 cents to around 7 cents uh, and growing thereafter. So we think it's a win-win uh, for uh, both uh, uh, KMP and KMI, and it's certainly a win for, we believe, for the Copano unit holders who received a nice premium to their uh, closing price uh, yesterday into their 30-day trading average, trailing average. Uh, Copano is about 400. 15 employees. Uh, we will employ the vast majority of those. Uh, we will have some synergies uh, uh, in the deal, uh, both from a commercial and operational uh, standpoint, uh, but this is not about cost savings. This is about uh, using this as a springboard uh, to make additional investments, uh, particularly in the shale plays in Texas and to a lesser extent in Oklahoma. Uh, Copano, for example, has on the books uh, uh, about a billion dollars of new projects scheduled to come online uh, over the next two to two and a half years, and we will be able to take advantage of those, and we see uh, a lot of additional projects uh, that we will be able to do uh, beyond that time frame. So uh, we certainly think it's a win-win, uh, and uh, we, uh, we believe uh, it's good for uh, all the uh, uh, shareholders and unit holders uh, involved. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea, this next slide, of uh, uh, what, why the strategic combination is important. Uh, as I said, uh, this, uh, we believe, provides us with a gathering, processing, and fractionation growth platform for the future. Uh, Copano has a proven operations team with a track record of delivering growth. Uh, we believe we can fold those into our midstream efforts uh, and uh, benefit the existing KMP midstream assets, uh, many of which we acquired as a result of the El Paso merger. Uh, as I said, they have a billion-dollar backlog of identified growth projects. Uh, we think we can expand on that uh, and develop even more uh, opportunities. Uh, they have a strong, rich gas play presence, particularly in the Eagleford, uh, and substantial long-term fee-based cash flows. And let me just say that as we ramp up our presence uh, in the GNP and fractionation area, we will be emphasizing fee-based as Copano has moved toward over the last uh, couple of years. 
If you look at uh, uh, at the details of what Copano owns now, uh, it's natural gas gathering, uh, some intrastate transmission, and then the processing, treating, and NGL fractionation services. Uh, they have 6,900 miles of pipeline with uh, 2.7 uh, BCF a day of throughput capacity. They have nine processing plants with more than a BCF a day of processing capacity. The largest of those, of course, the so-called Houston Central Plant, is right on the main line of our Texas intrastate system, so it's just a good fit uh, from that standpoint also. And they have a little over $300 million a day of uh, treating capacity. Uh, in Texas, uh, they gather and transport and process and fractionate uh, gas from the Eagleford and also in North Texas from the Barnett Shale uh, and uh, from the Woodbine on the upper Gulf Coast. Uh, and also, of course, uh, when it closes, we will own 100% of our big uh, JV with them uh, in the Eagleford. Uh, in Oklahoma, uh, they uh, gather and process gas in some uh, very good plays there, the Mississippi Lime and the Hunt and Dewatering play, uh, and we will maintain the presence in Tulsa that they currently have uh, and uh, go forward with their projects there. We think there's some growth uh, in Oklahoma also. Uh, much smaller scale, they have some uh, uh, assets uh, in northeast Wyoming uh, where uh, uh, they treat some coal bed methane. Uh, uh, there's some potential there for the Niagara, but let me just say we certainly didn't buy this based on the Wyoming assets, and they are a minuscule part uh, of the cash flow of Copano. 